morning everyone carol here at oak house journals and as always a very big warm welcome from me thank you for popping over so this is my video for week 24 of the um, 52 tag project and as soon as i saw that the prompt was tatting um, I stopped the video and rushed around trying to find my tatting shuttles because I haven't played with these for years, literally years. So I was really pleased at the thought of being able to have another play and actually to see if I could remember how to do it. Um, so as you can see, I've got a couple of vintage um, shuttles here. This is a really old one with a removable shuttle in or bobbin in the middle and these are lovely to use they're so much easier to to wind um but i have to say i hardly ever use this one other than for the hook at the end um i always find tatting with these or i used to find tatting with these quite difficult because of my technique um or method of tatting i always used to get that hook um caught this is another shuttle but this one has got a um, fixed shaft or post as you can see in the middle there um lovely shuttle but i never really use it this was my favorite shuttle it's just um a plastic millward shuttle um, and this was always my preferred one to to use it's it's got a fixed post in the middle like this one so it was a bit of a pain to wind but it was the one that was lightest and easiest to carry around because I used to tat um, when I was a teenager um, and if I tell you that I did this hanky for my mum one mother's day um, it was just a cheap hanky that I bought with my pocket money and then I tatted the um, edging round the outs outside and I found this in amongst her belongings uh, last year and I didn't know that she'd kept it all these years. Um, I'm 60 plus now and I know I did that when I was 13 so uh, I was just amazed. So when when I heard that the prompt was tatting, I thought, right, OK, if I can remember how to do it, then I will do an edging piece like this and put it in the heirloom journal. So then I went back to Anne's video and started watching again and she was using needles and I didn't know you could tat with needles. I never knew that needle tatting was in existence. So thank you so much for that, Anne. Um, I then lost two and a half hours of my life <laughs> watching YouTube videos um, of um, people tatting, needle tatting. I was fascinated, but I decided I would stick to my old tried and tested method if I could remember how to do it. Um, so I've decided that I will do some um, tatting. Um, I only had this tatting um, crochet cotton or tatting cotton in my stash this is a 60 weight um, and I decided that this color wasn't going to be right for the heirloom journal this is kind of like a beigey color I wanted a white or a gray or a very pale blue so I went online and I ordered some and whilst I was waiting for it to arrive I decided I'd have a little play to see if I could remember how to tat um, and I made a little circle here just to remind myself it's one of these loops on here um, so that's a basic ring and that's using 60 weight um, tatting cotton um, so I was really pleased it, it was like riding a bike I could remember how to do it so I then decided that I would have a go and do a little plain um, motif of some sort so I made this little one um, I was a bit rusty it's not particularly even um, but I'm quite happy with how it turned out and certainly I know now I can remember how to tat but what I did learn was how long it took me to do it I mean to do this took me about two and a half hours to do um, I'm not um, quick at tatting by any means so I was kind of thinking that maybe I would just make a couple of these rather than do a long length of edging like I've done on the hanky here. Um, this looks like a 20 weight 
that I've used on here so this would have grown a lot quicker um, so um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I think I will make a couple of motifs rather than go for an edging. Now my my tatting um, cotton did arrive, beautiful stuff um, in a pale blue and in a white, but for some reason, <laughs> I don't know why, I ordered 80 weight. So if this is 60 weight, as you can see here, 80 weight, is even finer so it will take me even longer to make one of these um, so I'm going to order some more in a 60 weight and then when that arrives I will make my decision whether or not I'm going to do an edging like this um, just a piece of edging and use it in my heirloom journal or if I'm going to um, make motifs which will be at quicker for me to make so that's what I'm thinking so hopefully it will be here within a couple of days and I can crack on and um, get going on this project so I finally got my ball of thread and as you can see I've made a, a start on the um, little motif here in the 40 weight um, I'm working from the ball and the shuttle and doing something called reverse work. It all sounds very technical, but it really isn't, trust me. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this ball out of shot for you so that it's out of the way for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of stitches. I'm going to show you how I do um, one of these little rings. And um, then I'll show you how I reverse the work to do this little bit of chain. Um, and then I'm going to... Um, come back to you when I've done the whole of the motif because I haven't got any plans for showing you something really exciting um, for what I'm going to do with these. All I'm going to do is make a couple of these and then pop them away in my heirloom journal project box ready to use when I want to use them on a, on a page. Um, so actually watching me remember how to crochet is going to be very much like watching paint dry trust me it's going to be painful <laughs> so okay dropping the glasses I'm getting going here so I'm I've just um reversed my work and I've got a loop of thread here that's wrapped around my fingers um and all you do really to tat is you do two basic stitches so I'm getting my thread under my hand passing it over the thread that's on my, or wrapped around my hand, pulling it through, getting a, a loop of thread, and then doing another stitch. And this time I'm going over the thread on my hand a different way. And you create effectively what is a slip knot, if you can see, on your hand. Now, if you get it wrong, then you've created a knot, not a slip knot, you've created a knot. And trust me, tatting is not forgiving. So if you get it wrong, um, it's a pain because you've then got to start unpicking it. And when it's fine work like this, um, it is a nightmare. So the best tip I can give you if you're learning to tat um, is just keep on testing that you can do this with your thread. And actually, as you are stitching, you will be doing that all the time because you are releasing more thread to do your stitches on and also um, checking the tension or altering the, the tension depending on um, whether you're working from the shuttle or working along this one down here, which is the spool thread. So... Those two stitches actually, or those two parts, form one stitch. So I've just done one stitch and shown you there. So I'm just going to carry on and do a few more. So that's the first part of my second stitch. And that's the second part. So that's my third stitch done. Fourth stitch and whoops a daisy let's do it that way fifth stitch got a bit too much thread out here on my bobbin so I'm just checking again that everything's working okay now what I need to do now is join part of this little loop to 
one of these loopy bits here. Now these are called picots and all they are are um, gaps left in the stitch between the stitches but to join them together, one ring together, you have to use one of these hooks at the end of your tatting shuttle. You can use a crochet hook. Um, I'm just pulling that through. And what you have to do now is put your shuttle through the loop that you've just created. Um, and all I've done is create a little bit of slack on the loop that's around my finger. Just tightening up my stitches again and finishing off that connection. And again, just checking that everything's working okay. So now I'm just going to carry on. So that's my second. Oops, a daisy. There we go. That's my second stitch done. Checking. See, I've forgotten. I haven't got my muscle memory quite back for, <laughs> for remembering how to do this. That's my third stitch. Fourth stitch. And that's my fifth stitch. So what I'm doing is I'm doing five stitches, then one of these loops, another five stitches, another loop, another five stitches, another loop, and another five stitches to create my ring. Um, so it's it's called a five stitch three pico ring. So to do the pico, as you can see, I've got two little dots on my hand. Now I haven't got a, a peacot, which is one of these loops again, a peacock gate, peacot, P-I-C-O-T, peacot gauge. So um, a trick from ages and ages ago in my tatting life is um, you do two little dots and that way it helps you get your little picots consistent. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the end of... Um, or my last stitch on my first dot. And I'm just going to make a stitch as normal. So that's my first part of my stitch. And then I'm going to close it up to where the second dot is and then just hold it with my thumb, pinch it like so with my thumb as I make the second stitch or the second part of the stitch. And that's my pico. As you can see, all it is is an elongated stitch. And when I pull my thread, it just closes it up and makes that loop. And that's all there is to it. See, there's nothing particularly hard about tatting once you get the technique. Um, the hardest part is actually getting the, the technique. Um, and now I've got... Now, as I said, I'm not going to carry on doing this um, whilst you watch. You'll lose the will to live, trust me, because <laughs> you'll be here for ages. So what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to speed up the, um, the process. I'm going to switch off now until carry on doing this. Um, I'll do another five more stitches, then do one of these picots. Um, and then I'll get to the stage where I'm ready to close up my loop and then I'll, whoops, I'm off camera there, sorry. Um, then I'll get to the stage where I'm ready to close my loop up and I'll, I'll show you again. Okay, so I've done my ring and I'm just about ready to close it up. So what I've done is I've slipped, I'm going to get that thread out of the way, I've slipped the um, thread or the loop from round my hand. This is the direction I was stitching, so clockwise. So all you do is you pinch where your last stitches are and if you've got all your stitches done correctly, this loop will close right up. So this is my bobbin thread. So what I'm going to do is still pinching. It's a bit like closing a bullion knot up this is really. I'm just pulling my thread and pulling it quite tight. And there we go, it's, it's closed up. 
like so. Now what you do is you just, you, you just, you reverse your work. So literally reversing your work, all that means is taking it and turning it over like so. Really easy, isn't it? So now what I'm going to be doing, I'm not going to be working on or off my bobbin thread. I'm going to be working off this thread here, which is connected to my ball. So for that, it's a slightly different technique how you hold it. You, I'm just pinching the piece of work between my thumb and index finger. And this is my bobbin thread. I'm just winding that over the back of my hand and taking up the slack by wrapping it over my little finger there. So that keeps my tension for me here. I'm just going to wrap it twice. So now what I need to do is when I've taken up the slack on my shuttle, see what I mean about them being a pain to wind. Can you imagine winding kind of three or four meters like that on this thing? Anyway, on your shuttle. So now you just carry on doing your normal stitches. So thread underneath, through there, back again, flipping it over. And you just need to make sure that your first stitch really gets butted up tightly to your last stitch that you did. So there's my first stitch. So I now have to do a chain and my chain is 10 stitches and one pico and then another 10 stitches and then you reverse your work again. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. So I've already done one stitch. So that's the first half of my second stitch. There's my second stitch. First half of my third. Third stitch. So there are my 10 stitches. All I do now is, again, if you've done the stitches correctly, you should be able to just tighten them up, which I have done. Not very uniform um, this time round, but never mind, I'm getting there. And then, again, to do your circles, I'm reversing work. So I'm no longer going to be working on the ball thread, which is here. I'm going to go back to work on the shuttle thread for my circles. So reverse work. Is just switch it over and to do that you just create your circle with your shuttle thread around the back of your hand oops a daisy a bit more and oops do your first stitch and the only thing you need to do is every time you reverse your work and start working again is to make sure that your first stitch is nicely butted up to your previous or your last stitch. So there we go, I've done it. And I'm just checking that it's right by checking that that thread over my hand is running nicely. A little bit snug there, so I'm just wondering if I have messed up my stitch no it's fine it's fine um, and then just carry on so that's what I'm going to do um, so now what I do now is my first five um, stitches join it up and I'll be joining up to this little one here this little loop here and then carry on doing the rest of my stitches. So I'm just going to carry on now until I've got one, two, three, four, five, one more of these done. Um, and then I'll be joining up to complete my circle because as you can see from this one, there's six center rings and then you've got the, the chains around the outside. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and finish off. So now I've closed up my circle. I've reversed my work. I'm now going to do what we've done previously on all the others, and that is start working off my, whoops a daisy, my ball thread. So I'm just doing my first stitch, closing it up nice and tight, like so. So there we go. 
and off I go to do my 10 stitches on my chain. Your first stitch you go underneath the thread you, um, that's on your hand. The second stitch you go over the top so if you're not paying attention or your concentration lapses um, then you kind of <laughs> have to think what you're doing for a second or two. And clearly I can't do two things at once at the moment. I can't remember uh, well enough how to do all of this to relax into it without having to think what I'm doing. As I say, when I get going, I'm fine. <laughs> but when I'm trying to talk or uh, do anything else, <laughs> I am um, I struggle a little bit um, with the bike analogy. <laughs> I'm not fit to be led out on the road. <laughs> not yet, anyway. So, anyway. So, let me just check if I've done my 10 stitches before I go any further. Otherwise, there'll be tears at bedtime. Um, here we go. Yes, I've done my 10. So now I just do my little pico. So over the top. See, not paying attention there. Over and through. That's it. So my little homemade pico marker. Close up my stitch and then off we go again. So last pair ten. There we go. So same as before, all I do now is I'm just tighten up those stitches try and get a nice curve and reversing my work and that little chain just gets connected as you can see to the bottom of that ring and you would do that with a needle and either then run your threads through your work or just do a little knot depending on where this is going to be used um, and these little picots here they're either decorative or you use them, as I've done with the rings, to attach the rings to. Or if I was making more motifs, motifs like this one, um, I would join them together like that. They would probably join together like that. Um, this one obviously is smaller, my first attempt, because this is 60 weight um, tatting thread. And this, as you can see, is 40 weight, so it comes out slightly bigger. But these just now need a press and they'll they'll look absolutely fine. So thank you so much for watching everybody. Um, I'm going to stop the video now. Um, as I say, I'm going to be using these in the heirloom journal or certainly this one, not, not this one, um, in the heirloom journal. So it's going to go in the heirloom journal project box and I'll lift it out and you might see it at some stage in the future. Um, if I decide to go on and do um, some edging, then obviously... I'll pop back on and, and show you um, but to actually do the edging it's more or less the same as I've already done you work the circles but instead of um, attaching it to each of your rings you just carry on in a straight line so no great shakes um, about how to do that this is very 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 simple tatting but that's about all I can do I can tat but only very uh, simple stuff. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.